Hello, hello there, my crafty friends. It is Candy here from SweetStamper.com, and I'm so happy to be with you here today. I leave in just two days for the Stampin' Up! incentive trip, so there's lots of excitement in my house. There's so much going on. You know how it is when you're trying to get ready to go on a trip. There's so much to do. You know, you got to sort out the dog and the refrigerator and the neighbors and the garbage cans and all of that stuff. So, and then there's packing, which I am uh, infamous, shall we say, for being a last minute Lucy when it comes to packing. But I'm getting too old for that, I think. I don't know, in my old age, I'm seeming to uh, wow. wanting to do that a little bit sooner rather than later. So, let me just make sure, oh yes, I'm in the right place. This is good. Um, you know, we continue to have some challenges with our Facebook Lives. Stamp, uh, not stamp it up. Facebook has changed something and they removed the little um, tool that allows us to do a mirror image so that you're not seeing things backwards. Like you can see the clock behind me is coming up backwards. We usually do a mirror image. Stamp it up. Seem, stamp it up. Um, Facebook seems to have taken that away for now. So the only workaround I have figured out is just to bring the camera down and um, yeah, anyway, we have a little bit of a workaround. So it's a little bit different, but I think it's gonna be okay. So, you know, that is what we do. We just keep going. So I'm gonna give it just a minute. Nobody's here. I don't know if you didn't think I was coming today because my trip is this week. I don't know. Usually there's somebody here by now. But I have something fun. We do Simple and Stamped Up every Thursday. Hey, Barb, you're here. Welcome. Um, we do Simple and Stepped Up Stamping every Thursday. So we start with something simple, and then we step it up a little bit. So that is what I have for you. We're going to be pretty quick today because, yeah, I got a bunch of stuff that has to get out in the mail before I leave. And I, although I have... Um, tomorrow. I'm getting my nails done tomorrow and all that kind of stuff. So I'm trying to get everything. I'm, I'm trying to get everything with my business closed out and finished up today. So yay, Jill, I'm glad you're here. And Debbie is here and Twyla's here. Yay. Okay. Mary's here. Welcome. Welcome. You can see I've got a little bit of island gear going here. So I picked up this flower last time I was in Hawaii on a Stampin' Up! incentive trip six years ago this week. Because it comes up, you know, in your Facebook memories. And um, so, yeah. Because uh, I can't wear anything, you know, that's going with us on the trip. So, a couple of days ago, it was like, okay, I need to stop wearing anything that has to be washed before I go away. Yeah. You know what it's like. And, you know, having said that, I used to have uh, trips kind of going away as a well-oiled machine. You know, we vacation a couple of times a year. Well, when COVID happened, you know, we haven't been anywhere in so long. I've kind of gotten out of practice. So anyway, okay, I am going to attempt to flip camera around and hope that we get something, a semblance of what I'm hoping, and it may take me a second, and again, this is Facebook's doing. I apologize, you probably end up getting a chest shot, which is not my intention. Um, <laughs> here we go, here we go. Okay. Oh, no. We got to go this way. Okay. Oh. And we're upside down. Okay. Well, we will just go with it, you know? We are just going to go with it because, oh, that means I don't have to stamp upside down with you, which is what I usually have to do. Okay. Here we go. Let's get this in the little phone holder. Hopefully I will not drop it. This thing has a really strong grip, which is brilliant for the most part, except that the challenging part is that it takes me, oh, what happened? Oh, that was my hand. It takes me a little bit of doing to get the thing open. Okay, I think we're not bad. It's really bright though. For some reason it's showing like a major light let me see if I can get that turned off. Hmm. Okay, I think that's better. Okay, here we go. Let me do a quick review. I always like to do a review. So this is where we were on Tuesday. We were learning how to use this lovely um, 
stamp set called, well, it's a bundle called Colors and Contours. Um, I believe, if I recall, um, stamp, oh, I'm going upside down by habit. <laughs> um, this bundle is the top selling bundle that's not part of a suite. So uh, we paired it with the perfectly penned um, paper and brought in my favorite pale papaya and we made three cards. So well, actually we made these two. This one was from a make and take from my little um, live event that was a new catalog sneak peek. And then, cause I did it right before it went live. And then these are the ones we did it where we stamped it. And then we also did where we stamped it and cut it out cause the dies do punch out. This lovely scalloped um, stitched die is part of the dies. So that's where we went on Tuesday. I did manage to get from, these were downstairs when I went live Tuesday, uh, because sometimes I work like on my computer downstairs. I can, I can work on tutorials while I'm you know watching TV or something sometimes. So this is my Cards with a Twist class for Monday, and this is open for registration now and while I'm gone, and then as soon as I get back, this will get prepped and ready for the mail. So Cards with a Twist is my monthly eight card class. It's $35. You get everything you need for two each of four designs. I do a little twist on each design, so that's why it's called Cards with a Twist. And um, I try to use every stamp in the stamp set, which I think I got just about every one. I might have missed one. And um, that way you really learn to use a stamp set. It centers around one stamp set. So you get everything you need for prepped and ready to go, including your die cuts for these eight cards. You do get a quarter pack of this fantastic designer series paper, which I'm using today. And you do get a full roll of this fabulous ribbon the crinkled seam binding, and you get these fun little hearts. These are the resin hearts. All of that is, well, the the Party Puffins stamp set. You can add on if you want. Um, the Party Puffins is a brand new catalog stamp set. The paper and the embellishments are from the January to June catalog because, of course, we have that through June, and I want to keep using that stuff while I can. So... Be sure to consider Party Puffins. I think these uh, Party Puffins are just such cute, happy images, and I paired them with really bright colors, and that's going to make happy cards for lots of people. Any age, I think, is going to be just charmed by those adorable Party Puffins, and those cards are going to bring a smile. These are the cards we did for the big fundraiser that I ran on, well, technically at the weekend, and, um, oh, I already see something that I need, and uh, it was on Saturday. We had about 25 people came together, and then I sent about 75 packets out at the weekend. So these are the cards that we made, and this is what I'm going to be making with you here today, and um, this was to benefit a single mom in my team who lost her only child. And after three years of cancer, yeah, there's a lot of bills. So we did, we managed to to make, well, I was able to write her a check for over $2,000. So it was awesome. Let me grab some white and black cardstock really quick. Okay. And the way we were able to do that is I put together a card class and I donated all my profits. So that's how everybody doing a little bit um, was able to really do something to help Martha. And I tell you, being able to write her that big check was really made my heart happy. And it's because everybody did a little something. And when everybody does a little something, we put it all together. We can have a really, um, a really amazing result. So let me show you. Yes, I love Bonnie. I love black and white. Um, we're going to do black and white today, and then we're going to add some pops of a new in color. So I like to do in color training, especially the first few months of a new catalog. And so I'm going to be showing you this color combination, although not really using the Mango Melody. We're going to be using these colors here. Okay. So what we have is, and I'm probably going to just build these two cards together. 
side by side because it's gonna save me time. I'm using this sentiment stamp set. Hello from the Lou to you, Terry Lynn. I'm glad you're joining us. This is in the January to June mini catalog. It's one of our million dollar achiever stamp sets inspired by Jackie Bullheis, amazing lady, amazing uh, demonstrator. And I love this because it has inside and outside greetings. It has greetings that you can use in umpteen different ways. And so, and one, two, three, four of them fit into a number of our punches. So this is really a good basic um, greeting stamp set. I like the mixed fonts. It will not be carrying in, it didn't carry into the main catalog. So this is available through the end of June only. So we are going to make some pretty birthday cards today. Black and white. We're gonna go black and white and then we're gonna add some pops of pink and see where we go. I am using thick, basic white cardstock. Now there is a difference. Sometimes we think there's only basic white and basic white is thinner. It's thinner by design. It's meant for layering. But when, when you go to have a card base, it's really a bit thin. So this thick basic white is the same thickness as our colored card stocks. So that's why you really want to have both on hand. Okay, so let's go ahead and just layer up. I've cut two of these really bold uh, patterns with a lot of black on them. I've cut these at five and a quarter by four. Super, super simple. Now you see, that would be really pretty too. But I'm gonna put this flower on top and that's just, yes, too much. So I will say I love all the patterns in this paper. Where is my trusty little, here we go. This is the key. Anybody who's having a little bit of a challenge with your new stamp and seal, this is the key, is use your um, silicone mat and it will get things going for you every single time and take any frustration that you might be having. I think part of it is that you need a really light hand with the seal and I'm a heavy-handed stamper. I tend to mash everything. And yeah, pretty birthday cards, Terry Lynn. It's something we just need all the time. You know, I, I don't know about you, but I fill up my stash and then before I know it, it's empty again. So birthday cards are those ones that we tend to just grab over and over and over again. Also, if you make a set of four or five, they make a lovely gift to give. So there we go. Now, watch what's going to happen here. Look at that. Isn't that just gorgeous? Just the way it is. I mean, you don't even need hardly anything else. So let's add this, and I'm not even going to put this up on dimensionals. And this is very much um, casing myself. This is what we did for my fundraiser. And I wanted to have um, cards that would be easily put together by anybody because we gave people three options. You could either come to the live event and put your cards together there, or you could get a card kit by mail where you could put your cards together on your own, or you could also get them finished and mailed to you because I wanted to be able to draw in people to my fundraiser that maybe are not stampers yet. So I knew I needed something that would be super quick I um, got some volunteers at my live event to stamp the sets of five cards for the ones that were going to be mailed that way. Now, all I've done here is, look at how beautifully that fits. All I've done is I've stamped this with my tuxedo black ink, and now I'm going to feed it into my tailored tag punch. And then we're going to do a little fancy footwork here, but still super quick and easy. I'm telling you, this tailored tag punch is perfect probably my favorite of all of our punches. I'm going to also punch two black ones. So I've got two black and two white. So that's what people got in their kits. And now, let me grab some snips. What I'm gonna do, this is a little fancy footwork. We are going to take this black label and we're going to cut it in half right down like that. Hey, Kathy, I'm glad you're here. We are casing the um, one of the cards that we made on Saturday, and then we're going to step it up. 
So the way I like to do this to make a little frame is I like to put some adhesive on these tips. And then you just line that up and voila, you have a lovely frame. I don't want it to be too big. I just want a little bit of black there to give me a nice little frame. And you'll notice because we split it in half, you don't the frame doesn't go around the sides, it just goes around the top and the bottom. And that's actually just enough for us. Hey, Melissa, I'm glad you're here. Welcome, welcome. We do simple and stepped up on Thursdays. And so that is what we are doing. Simple and stepped up right before I leave for Maui. So there, I could put it in the center. That looks pretty good too. Maybe I'll do it in the center. I think on the original, I don't know. There's, it could go in a lot of different ways. So honestly, that is it. You know, stamp sync and paper, that black and white paper I think is really hard to go wrong with. And again, we didn't even use any dimensionals or anything. I will add just a wee bit of bling. So, and this is the way we did them at the event. <clears throat> Everybody got a, um, hey Judy, I'm glad you're here. Everybody got a, um, a row of, of um, what do you call these, <laughs> rhinestones. And so then you could just kind of put a little bit, you know, diamonds are a girl's best friend. Definitely look nice on a birthday card. So really, you know, that is it. Let me see if I can find a place that's, yeah, we'll do that. I think it looks better on the black. So that's our simple, I mean, super simple. One punch, rhinestones, which are an absolute basic. That black and white paper, you can do a thousand things with. So now let's take the same card and let's step it up just a little bit. And I'll show you what we're gonna do. We are going to color these flowers and I think it's gonna come out really pretty. So, Let's go ahead and get our label ready. So this is why I want everybody to have this tailored tag punch. Not only can you get these awesome tags like this, hey Marlene, but you also, you know this is what I use all the time to flag my, to make my little flags. I always use the tailored tag punch. It just makes things so, so easy. Now I'm not gonna stick this down yet because I am going to grab some blends. Now, I told you we like to do a little bit of training on the new in colors. Where's my little, oh, here we go, right in front of me. This is what we're gonna look at. I'm gonna go with polished pink and mossy meadow. So let's see what happens when we add a pot of pink to these flowers. And let's see if we can make them really, really come alive. This is the dark polished pink. This is one of our new in colors, super pretty pink. It's um, a little bit warm, but not overly. And I like to do, going over all of these bits here, all the dark bits with the dark blend. So I'm coloring all of the outlines and I'm coloring some of the highlights inside. And I think I'm going to probably do that on all of these because I haven't totally decided where I'm gonna put my label yet, my happy birthday label. And I don't want to cover up the beauty of these flowers too much, but I having them peek out behind that label would actually be really pretty. Let's see, I think I got them all, let's get here a few more petals. So I will be broadcasting, or at least uh, I'm, I'm gonna try to do a Facebook Live from Maui, but I know I'll be sharing photos. We are six hours behind in Maui compared to here in San Antonio. So I usually go live here at two. That would mean eight in the morning for me in Maui. I will not be ready for seeing the public. I'm hoping to still be in bed at eight o'clock. Now we'll see how that goes with the time difference and all that good stuff. So I am continuing to have my flowers here. I think I just froze just for a second. All of a sudden Facebook said trying to reconnect. So I think I'm reconnected. Apologies if I froze on you. Um, 
froze my computer. It, let's see if I can get it back. So we will get all of these petals. Oh yeah, it's back. All these petals done. And this is the part that takes the longest when you're doing the outline because, you know, you don't want to be too, too messy on it. Okay, so that's done. And you know how we close these. We just snap. Okay. Now I'm going to take the brush tip of the light version of Petal Pink. No, Polish Pink. And look at that pink. Look at how vibrant that pink is. And when you put it on the, look, look what's going to happen. Look what's gonna happen when we put it on that black and white. I think it's gonna really pop. And notice I do have, uh, I usually have grid paper underneath me when I'm working anyway, but particularly when you're using blends, they do bleed through. They are alcohol markers and they will bleed through your paper. So you don't wanna be using them on just like a table, uh, especially a white table, because you'll get that mark underneath you and that's something that you really don't want. Um, I was also going to mention, ay, ay, ay. <sighs> see when it did this on the computer, it messed me up and I can't see you again. Hmm. Ah, oh, there's the one I need right there. Okay. Okay, here we go. So we will just keep, oh, I forgot these little guys over here. You know, when these flowers are folded up like that, they almost look like a little tulip. Also, I wanted to tell you that when you are using your blends on this paper, and this is the True Love Designer Series paper from the January to June mini catalog, when you're using your alcohol markers on it, you're going to see some of the backside bleeding through, but once the marker dries, it, you won't see it. So don't panic when you're doing this and you're seeing these strange things underneath you. So that is coming along very nicely. I'm gonna do the same thing. Oh, I think I need, this little guy over here needs a little bit of color. Don't wanna leave that little guy little tiny bits, you know, sometimes those little details make a big difference. So now we are going to do the same thing with the Mossy Meadow. This is the color that Stampin' Up! recommends to put with polished pink. I love Mossy Meadow. If you've been around Stampin' Up! for any length of time, you will remember Always Artichoke. It was one of my favorite colors. I loved it. That deep dark, what I used to think of as army green, but it was much richer than that. And when they came out with Mossy Meadow, it was actually an end color at one time. And then... When Stampin' Up, hey Shirley, I'm glad you're here. When Stampin' Up did their color refresh, um, Mossy Meadow uh, came in and took the place, basically, of Always Artichoke, and I love it. It it was actually a perfect thing to take the place of Always Artichoke because it's like a more saturated version of a color that we all loved, and so you know when Stampin' Up makes a change like that. There's a reason behind it. And if you look at the colors now compared to the colors of, you know, 10, 15 years ago, for the most part, not, not always, they're much more saturated. And that's just, I think, the way that color works now. I think maybe the way that the inks work, maybe the way that, um, I need to replace that. My brush tip is getting all fuzzy. Um, maybe the way that uh, ink is printed as well. So this is the lighter uh, Mossy Meadow, and look at how deep and rich that is. That perfectly sets off that polished pink. I think it's a lovely color combination. Welcome, Beth, I'm glad that you have joined us. So I'm almost done here. You can see why this is my stepped up. I'm stepping it up by adding color. Usually I step up by adding a lot of embellishments and blinging it out. This time I thought, let's step it up by adding some color. And it also kind of shows you one more thing that you can do with this gorgeous True Love paper. It's an absolute favorite of mine. We've had some other black and white papers before. I think this is the best one we've ever had. 
So my coloring is done. My color combo chart came in very handy because I didn't have to think about which, which green is gonna look good with these leaves on my flowers. So I'm gonna pull this away so that we can see it a little bit better. Now look, now look. <laughs> and I think I will pop this up on dimensionals this time. I think I'm gonna do it right like that. Let's see if we wanna do it like this. Nope. I think we're gonna do it like this. So let's go ahead and pop this up. That's another way we're going to step it up a little bit. We're gonna add some dimensionals this time. If I can lay my hand to them, I, th I know I got them out. Ah, right underneath, where most things are that I'm looking for, underneath something else. So you can see how this bled through to the other side. And that is normal and natural for, actually for any paper with the blends, but particularly with a designer paper because it is thinner. And you'll notice I'm putting quite a few um, dimensionals here, and it is because it's a thinner paper, and I don't want it to sag in the middle on me. So let's see what we're gonna come up with here. And I'm going to also do a little fancy footwork on the envelope. Let's see. Oh, look at those flowers. Aren't they gorgeous? I think I'm gonna do them in the middle this time. And that's going to allow me to also put my label in such a way that it really just, mm, I like it. I like it a lot. I think I'm gonna go right about like that. I hate to cover up that big pretty flower, but this happy birthday needs to go somewhere. Now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna put this flat because this is already raised up and I'm gonna put just a little mini dimensional right under there, and that way the, the um, edge is not going to be sagging, as it were. So that's where these little guys really come in handy. Let me get them on the right edge, there we go. Then it's gonna be at the same height as the rest of my um, label. So let me grab this. I want it to stick down really well. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you go from simple to stepped up. There's simple and there's stepped up. Now let's add a little bit of bling because we did have our rhinestones. I did think what we might want to add this time, I don't know. I have these pearls, these are the um, pastel pearls. And we have pink, which would look really nice there. Purple, probably not. The gray ones actually might look really cool. So I'm kind of going with the pink or the gray, or I can go with rhinestones. So I'm gonna kind of wait and see what you guys wanna tell me. And uh, Diane, if you are wondering which stamp set this is, this is from the January to June mini catalog, and it is called Happy Thoughts, and the designer paper is also from January to June, and it is called True Love. And while you're weighing in, I'm going to add some designer paper to my envelope and get where I can see your comments a little better again. Because my computer, when I lost, when I lost the, um, when I lost the feed, I lost the, um, oh yeah, there we are. Okay, pearls, pink pearls. Okay, I know I, we have at least two votes for pink pearls. Oh, several votes for pink pearls. Pearls it is. See, this is what I love is talking to you guys and we come to something, we, we, we put our heads together and we come up with a virtual design that we're all really happy with. So let's pull this guy out and let's see. Do we, I think we should probably just wanna put a pearl in the center of each flower. And I think that will just kind of do. Instead of having them kind of scattered, I think that finishes off really nicely. I might be able to get one right here, which means I could probably get one right here. Voila. I think we're there. What do we think, ladies? What do we think? Simple, stepped up. The only thing we we changed the um, we changed the embellishment from rhinestones to pearls. 
So we didn't really add anything in that sense. The only thing we added was the color. And I do think adding color to this designer series paper is just super fun. And speaking of, let me just show you, I'll pull in these puffin cards again from my cards with a twist class this month, because this is what I did on this card here. You see how I added the color to the daisies and I was gonna put the date, it reminded me, cause I'm gonna put these daisies on my envelope. Or I could put the stripes. I don't know, I might do the stripes. As much as I love those daisies, to go with this card, I think the stripes might be a better fit. What do we think? What do we think, ladies? I'm gonna grab some liquid glue so that I can add the, um, I try to contain these so they don't go flying everywhere. Let me grab my liquid glue. And this is Simple and Stepped Up Stamping. It's what we do every Thursday here on my Facebook Live. And so what I'm going to do, the stripes, yeah, I thought so too. So what I'm gonna do is add just a wee bit. Yeah, I gotta go easy. You know, that's the, the, uh, the biggest thing with this liquid glue. I like it a lot, but you do have to take a light hand. Hmm. And I will tell you, show you another trick here. Something that a lot of people just forget to use, and particularly if your glue is getting near the end, do that. The bottom is like the old mucilage tip. And for, I know I'm dating myself here, but I don't think anybody will mind. And it's where you can just kind of, it actually makes it easier to not get too much glue and to be able to get it right to the edge you see how you just squeeze a little bit and then you can spread with that tip. A lot of times people don't realize that there's a whole nother tip down there. And I find particularly when I'm having trouble getting it out of the um, kind of pointed tip, usually because I'm getting near the end of the bottle, I find that I can have a lot more, I know there's still glue in there, I can feel it, but I can't seem to get it out, so. Am I on the right place? Yeah, there we go. I think we are there, yep. So, now we will bring these guys back in so you can see them. And you jazzed up an envelope for a birthday. Let's see, Mary's telling me something here. Oh, and you're, yeah, and whoever you gave it to flipped over it. Isn't that fun how you can just do something so simple like that? People are so impressed, which is not a bad thing, you know. I mean, when, when people are impressed with what we make, it's not a bad thing at all. It definitely encourages us in our creative endeavors. So I know that I got a card from Shirley recently. I know she's on here watching, and it had a beautiful decorated envelope with designer series paper. So there we go. Now I have that envelope to go with that card and I think it's a really winning combination. This is the card that we began with and this is very much um, the same card that we did on our, um, on our fundraiser. You know, I was thinking that if somebody had ordered these and got the full on cards, and wanted to add some color, what you could do is you could go behind here with some sponge daubers. Uh, because if you tried to add the blends here, I fear it would bleed through at that point. So that's what we have. Simple here, stepped up here. And I hope you enjoyed my last installment of Simple and Stepped Up until I get back from Maui. I return on the 27th, but I don't get back until the evening. Well, I think that's actually a Friday. Now, we leave the 27th, which is Thursday, but we don't get back until Friday. So I will see you actually in June. But I do want to tell you that I will have, let me flip this around again, say goodbye to you. Um, I will have some content here for you. So um, I'm not gonna just leave you high and dry. Thank you, Barb. I'm gonna, I'm planning to really have a good time. I, I desperately need a vacation. Um, I will have, I'm gonna schedule some things for you so you'll have some things to look at. And um, at two o'clock, you'll have a video here. 
And uh, cause I know a lot of you are used to coming here on Tuesdays and Thursdays at two o'clock. So um, you will have something to see here and um, I'm super excited. So there, and I will also be sharing photos of my Maui trip. I'm gonna try to post something every day because I mean, truth be told, I wanna share the trip with you guys, but it's going to actually serve a double purpose for me because then when I get home, my photos are already there on Facebook. And when I share them here, it's just easy for me to, sh to for all my friends to see them here as well. So that's it for today. Um, don't forget to sign up for my Party Puffins class because um, that sign up is active while I'm gone. I will be placing that order while I'm on Maui and um, so you need to get with the program and don't let that pass you by. Thanks again for tuning in today. Take care and God bless. Well. <laughs>